heralded the start of a new era in aviation. We were the early jet boys, you know, we were jet pilots. We were told we were the cream of, of Britain's youth and all that, you know, it was a big status thing. Soon after joining the Royal Air Force, Nick Carter became one of these early jet jockeys. After getting my wings on Baileys with about 120 hours in my logbook, we were sent off to fly these meteors, uh, which was a bit of a, a, a leap in many ways from a, a single-engine piston-engine aircraft to a twin-engine jet. The concept of the jet engine was not a new one. Frank Whittle had originally patented the idea in the 1930s. After persuading the government that jets were the way forward, Whittle worked on improving his designs. Airframes were then custom built around the engines. It was probably the most radical of the time. De Havilland's designed the Vampa to accommodate this quite wide diameter engine with relatively high thrust. Frank Whittle's son, Ian, flew vampires powered by the new Goblin engine. It has a greater diameter than the original uh, Meteor engines, like the Welland and the Derwent One, so it wasn't suitable to propel the Meteor aircraft. But it's very good, very reliable. I never had one flame out on me when I was flying on a vampire. Its single engine and balsa wood cockpit made the Vampire light and manoeuvrable and perfect for its role as a ground attack aircraft. Pilots flying the Meteor, however, as a high altitude interceptor, found it was prone to stability problems at high speeds. Some of us were quite apprehensive about it because a lot of chaps were coming unstuck. But there was quite a large number of crashes around about that time. And the most important instrument in flying the meter was the Mach meter. As you can see, the indicator was limited at 0.8 Mach. This limit, just under the speed of sound, around 540 miles per hour at high altitude, was critical. Any faster than this, and the plane lived up to its nickname, the meat box. All service pilots have nicknames for airplanes they fly. The high accident rate contributed to, to, to uh, it being called Meatbox. It's uh, rather an unfortunate name, really. Pilots sometimes felt they were riding a bucking bronco and on occasions had to leave the saddle quickly. This led to another great invention. Squadron leader John Fifield is about to make the first live experiment with a Martin Baker ejection seat. Out and up. The seat falls away, the parachute opens, and a safe landing is made. I was doing a tail chase at 30,000 feet and, and feeling the effect of compressibility, pulling a little bit of G. The aircraft flicked onto its back and started spiraling earthwards at high speed. At about uh, 10,000 feet or so, I thought this wasn't the place for me and I'd better bang out. You black out when you eject because of the acceleration. And then as you come to, in your parachute, you see where you are and you, you realise that everything's worked, fortunately. Sustaining considerably less damage than his aircraft, Nick lived to fly another day, and a speed limit was slapped on the meteor. Uh, exempt from these early jet jitters, began attracting interest abroad. In all my 30 years of flying, I have never had a greater thrill than flying this wonderful jet plane. More than 500 miles an hour in complete silence. This is real flying. Vampire plane is representative of creative British genius. This creative British genius sold well overseas. Over 4,000 vampires were built and exported to 30 different air forces. But like the Meteor, the Vampire was limited in speed by its straight-wing design. While lack of government backing hindered progress for British designers, in America, sweeping changes were taking place.